Brothers and sisters, I hope this Feast of the Transfiguration, your faith, your discipleship, your life with Christ, your relationship with God is transfigured. I hope it happens that way because the same thing happened for Peter, James, and John on the mountaintop. They get this great revelation of something about the identity of God, that the Messiah, the person that people were longing for to come and rescue them from slavery to sin, from all of the violence and the death in the world, that there was going to be this Son of God coming to them, and they are on this mountaintop, and they get this voice from heaven that still is reverberating through their ears, even as St. Peter is writing people years after, we heard this voice. A voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And they get this message that everyone was waiting for, that this Jesus Christ isn't just a good person who's going around curing people, proclaiming the gospel to them, healing the sick, raising the dead, but he's doing so because he is the Son of God. He's the one we've been waiting for. And you'd think there'd be so many people in the world who might like to hear that message, right? That there's the only begotten Son who was one with the Father and yet becomes just an insignificant human like you and I, lives in this world, takes on every part of our human nature so that he can redeem it, raise it, save it? You think there'd be so many people that would want to hear this message. And this is the funny thing with our faith, is we get these very transfigured moments, maybe much like Peter, James, and John. We come to Mass on Sunday. We receive the Eucharist. We maybe go on an Acts retreat, or maybe are a part of a faith-sharing group that lifts up our soul in a way that it hadn't been before. And we get this moment, God reveals himself to us in a way that we hadn't experienced before. And then he says, don't tell anyone about it. This happens with the disciples. It happens with us. Why is it that so many people fall away from the faith because they had these transfigured moments, and yet Jesus told them, don't tell anyone yet. And they can't wrestle their mind around the fact that God does that because he wants to reveal more of himself to us. And when he reveals more of himself to us, he tells us that it's not on the mountaintop that you know myself, that you know who God is in his entirety. You can't be there. You have to look to the cross. You have to look at the God who in order to show people, to reveal to them the fullness of what it means to love and to be God, means that to be God means dying for others. And if you and I come to the Eucharist to receive Jesus, in his body and blood and to be one with him. And brothers and sisters, that's a call to us to transfigure our hearts, our minds, our very souls and lives so that we do what God does. We die for the sake of our enemies, for those in our families, for the nosy coworker, the pesky family member who we just can't seem to handle or you don't realize like what makes them tick and it kind of irritates you, to that person, God has died so as to save. Who are you and I if we receive Jesus Christ in his body and blood and we do not die for that same person? Friends, this is a God who does reveal himself on the mountaintop, and we have wonderful experiences of faith, and I hope that you do, but I hope that your faith is also not dependent on those moments that keep you then from realizing that the fullness of who the Son of God is is not the dazzling white light shining on the mountain, but the dazzling light that shines when he's lifted high on the cross for all to see. That when he's lifted up here at the mass and the priest says, do this in memory of me, you hear that reverberate in your ears 
that he said, do this in memory of me, not do this and come to church so that you come away feeling like it's an hour well spent, that you come and you say, I offer you everything, Lord, because I actually can't offer the sacrifice that I wish in my life for my families like you do every day. I can't sacrifice for my enemies because there's still division. I can't reconcile with my family members because there's still tension. I can't overcome this addiction in my life that's crippling me because I have no power outside of that which comes from you, Christ. Friends, that's what it means to believe in the transfiguration, the revelation of Jesus Christ as the Son of God, is that the sacrifice that we offer at the Mass, our own personal daily sacrifices, are not ours to make. We can only sacrifice Christ, who sacrificed himself. Do you see, we need Christ as the Son of God to rescue us and save us and to make the sacrifice for us that we can't. That takes a whole lot of grace, but it's a message that I believe a lot of people need to hear, and they may never hear it if it doesn't come from you and I. If we never proclaim with our very lives the God that we believe that reveals himself when he's called upon to die for others so that they might live and have life and have it abundantly. I hope, brothers and sisters, that your faith can be transfigured in this kind of way, that when you see the priest and hear him say, lift up your hearts, which will happen at every Mass, that you envision you holding your own broken yet beating heart, and as the priest said, lift up your hearts, you say, we lift them up to the Lord. I lift up everything to you, Lord, broken yet still beating, knowing that you still come to me in the Eucharist, you give yourself to me so that I can be the sacrifice for others, I can be the presence of the living God who still works and lives and moves among us. Amen? Brothers and sisters, this is our faith. This is the gospel. We're sent to the people who need to hear this message through our lives, in and with us, so that we can make the sacrifices for others through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ.